It doesn't matter to y'all who wins the election this fall. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it may matter on a personal level, but from a business level, the answer is no. And I, I know that sounds counterintuitive, but, you know, we, the simple perspective we take in working, let's use the U.S. government as an example, but it's the same all over the world, is whoever's there, that's who you're going to be working with. And so we don't work issues in a partisan way because of who's there at the time. So, you know, I'll, you raised oil sands, that's controversial. The other thing we'll likely be doing in Alaska this summer is, is drilling offshore Alaska, which is equally, if not more, controversial. Now, we've done that working with the Obama administration to, you know, to walk through a very long process of determining with the potential benefits to the country, is this the right thing to do? So, I, you know, I can pretty clearly, some things may be easier with one winner or the other, but from the perspective of the company, it shouldn't and it can't matter. So this summer, as I understand it, the, the rig is on the way to, um, what is it, the, yeah. Chuck, the Chuck, Chuck Chi? Chuck Chi and the Beaufort. And the Beaufort. So they'll be drilling in both places this summer? There'll be two rigs, mm -hmm. and they're two rigs for specific reason. One of the first early thoughts in Alaska was just go with one rig because it minimizes the noise and the impact and so mm -hmm. forth. The final decision between us and the government was, was go for two rigs, drill in both seas at the same time, mm -hmm. so that you, if you need one rig to back up the other, you have two in the area and ready to go. How would, how would one rig back up the other? There, these, are, these rigs are equipped in a 100% redundant fashion, so everything it takes to drill a well mm -hmm. is on each rig twice. Okay. So if for some reason you, you had difficulty with a rig and you had an emergency situation and you had to react, you just you bring could drill in a, a rig. relief well. It could actually, you could drill a relief well or it could actually leave everything that it was using to drill in the Beaufort mm -hmm. and move to the Chuck Chi with all redundant equipment already on the ship ready to go. Who's, whose rigs are these? Well, they're, they're, one rig is ours, mm -hmm. and the other rig is, is contract. Most rigs in the world are Which contracted contract? from drilling contractors. This is uh, Noble. Okay. I mean, uh, since we're on the topic, uh, are you concerned at all that, I mean, I wrote a, a book on the Gulf oil spill. Yeah. The Arctic is a different environment, much fewer uh, resources to, to deploy if you had yeah. a spill. Uh, I mean, would you be ready to handle an emergency like the one that happened in the Gulf? Yeah, and, and, and you know, the, I think the, the piece that I hope makes sense is we wouldn't be, we wouldn't, we shouldn't allow ourselves as a company to do it if we couldn't respond. Because a problem that you couldn't deal with would be enough to destroy a company like Shell, just like it almost destroyed a company in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we'd be getting permission from the government and all the stakeholders that have to allow us to go do this if, if they weren't convinced now that we had the, the, uh, the plans and the equipment to deal with, with any of the emergencies we could encounter. I, do, I think particularly because you're so knowledgeable about what happened in the Gulf of Mexico, one of the things that's different about drilling in the Arctic is that it's incredibly remote and it's incredibly pristine. So there is nothing around at all. And the, the implications for that in terms of drilling in the Arctic is you don't, you don't have plans in place such that if you have a problem, you call out resources from various parts of the world. You take everything with you to begin with. Mm -hmm. So along with the government, we've, we've estimated what's called a worst case scenario. We've, we've identified all of the equipment and response to, to be able to respond to that within a one hour notice. And all of that equipment is mandated to be on site in the Arctic while we're drilling. It's completely what's the, what's the, different what's the than worst, anything you've seen. What's the worst case scenario? Worst case scenario is an uncontrolled well right. um, that has a, a spill rate that's calculated based on the pressures and right. the type of reservoirs that we're dealing with. And this is another reason why it's very different than the Gulf of Mexico. And then it's the, the ability to go in and, and capture that, that oil if mm -hmm. it's spilling and cap a well mm -hmm. with the equipment that's already been pre-prepared. And if, if you have difficulty capping it, be able to contain it and put it in a barge at the surface. So contrary what to what you, you saw in the Gulf of Mexico, yeah. the big difference is we're in, we're in 150 feet of water or less. Right. So you can actually get divers to the, to the equipment on the, the seafloor. Um, and we're dealing with what's called normal pressures or low pressures, not, right. not high flow rates right. and not high pressures.